I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I got so many, well, from 50% of the people who listen to me, so many thank you letters contacting me via the blog here about listening to my advice and not listening to what their friends down the block told them or the guy on the radio said or the magazine said. They didn't listen to anybody but me on how to pair the entire Thanksgiving dinner. Those who didn't listen were very upset. They came into the store and they said, Never, 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 never will I listen to those editorials. I should have went with the sparkling rosé because that goes with all the sugar and the trimmings and the, you know, the, the, uh, the candied yams and the cranberry sauce and my wine tasted like mud. I warned you, but I was so thankful that people had a chance to do that. And now comes the time, I call it, this is what I asked for. This is what they asked for. I have a list. I have a special request. My mother's very particular. My boss is very particular. My employees are very particular. They like this. My, my hairdresser is very particular. My doctor is very particular. Nobody's particular. You know, these brands they're asking for, these things they're asking for, I don't say don't buy the category. I say, I do a video like this every year. And maybe I've done some videos during the year for the same thing because I don't get it. I mean, I, I want to make you get it because I know in my heart after all these years of doing this that I, you could really turn this holiday into something special or, or your secret center or your white elephant, even if it's $10, $15 limit, $20 limit, and, or you could really screw it up by listening to what they, they, they told you to get or writing down the note that somebody told you, your manicurist told you they would like that because they drink that. And why is that? Why do I say that? It's because they're asking for what is ge generically out there in the marketplace. And I'll give you an example, an analogy, okay? Omaha steaks, right? Omaha steaks. You can easily go online and somebody says, I love beef. I love beef. And you say, that's going to be a great gift for that person. They love Omaha steaks, right? You can do that, but it's just a, 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 an online click away from omahasteaks.com or go to an Omaha Steaks there and purchase them the meat sampler with fillets and everything, frozen meat, USDA select, maybe choice. I don't know. It's not great quality beef, but it's what they know. They love their Omaha Steaks. Or you could kick it up a notch and don't buy them a whole box of meat of frozen beef that's going to come to their doorstep. They probably never heard of Lobel's in New York and Lobel's.com, you can go online there and, and you can buy them. Maybe they've never had an A5 graded Kobe beef. Kobe beef, the, the, the Japanese beef, A5 grade that is, uh, or maybe you don't, wanna, you don't have the money for that and maybe you just want a really good USDA prime grain fed tomahawk chop, 22 ounce, you know, that's dry aged four weeks from Lobel, fresh, not frozen, two restaurant quality steaks that would cost $100 a steak and they can get two of these steaks and you can get away with what you were going to buy for that whole box. Believe me, Omaha Steaks is not cheap. Instead of buying two just generic steaks from a place they know because that's what they asked for. That's what they asked for, right? I heard they love Omaha Steak. Buy them two steaks that they would never treat to themselves, that they would have to go to a very, very fine dining restaurant and spend a lot of money and put those two steaks on a grill and they're not frozen. You know, what if somebody likes blue cheese and they tell you, what kind of blue cheese does Charlie like? Charlie likes Gorgonzola. He likes Roquefort. Gorgonzola from Italy, Roquefort there. Well, that you could do to any market. You can go and say, hey, that's off my list. Check it off my list. Checking it twice. Seeing if you were naughty or nice. But that would be so boring if I told you I like Gorgonzola because that's all I knew. But you can go to murrayscheese.com online you know, or maybe your local little uh, fromagier cheese shop, and maybe you can make an entire box, a little gift box of little, you know, a couple ounce pieces that they can make and put it in a wooden crate of maybe uh, Valdeon cheese from Spain, which is a blue vein cheese, delicious. Or Cabralis, one of the greatest blue cheeses in the world. Just a little cube of that is like the most tangy. It's aged in, in limestone cave. Pont Levesque from France, blue cheese. Cambenzola from Germany, like a combination of blue vein uh, brie cheese or camembert. Cambenzola, like gorgonzola and camembert together. You can put all of that in a box with description from Murray's Cheese Shop in New York. The best, they airship to everybody, everywhere around the country. They put descriptions of the cheese. What would you rather get if you were the blue cheese lover? 
Would you rather have what I asked for, what I knew, the Gorgonzola and the Roquefort, or would you rather have that box of assorted blue cheeses? Do you get it? And with wine, especially, with wine, wine, the most important thing I always talk about is the vintage, and you're never gonna get that vintage. I'll bet you, how much you wanna bet right now? You'll never get the vintage of that wine. And they'll never tell you that. The person you ask, the sister-in-law that you ask, what does Charlie drink? What does Joe drink? What does she drink? I know she drinks XYZ brand of Chianti. Okay, well, maybe you got XYZ Chianti and 2001 was an amazing year in Chianti, but what the store has is a 2002 of the same brand and 2002 was a rainy, rainy, disgusting year in Chianti and all the wines are bitter and diluted, but you got a brand. You can't do that with wine. I have wines that are made by friends of mine and, and if I don't know the year, I mean, it could go from being my worst wine that I've ever tasted in my life to my best wine the very next year. The blending, the weather, the, 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 the whether, whether there was frost, whether there was ripeness. Uh, you know, I was out in Italy at La Gerla, uh, you know, talking about Brunello de Montalcino, 14 being a difficult vintage. They couldn't make a reserve of that year because they needed the grape to put in to the regular Brunello de Montalcino. See, so, so they have to do that. Everybody has bad weather. So a brand doesn't help you when it comes to wine. You think it does. They're only telling you that because they know that. So rely on experts like myself or people that have tasted that year, whether you're buying online, whether you're buying in a retail, but never, I, I know this sounds twisted because we're portraying to just get it over with and ask them what they, I don't know, I got to give them what they ask for. No, you don't. You give them the type of wine, the country or whatever it is that they drink or the spirit they drink, not the scotch they ask for, the generic brand name, find them a scotch from the same region that is something that they couldn't find on their own anywhere. I talk about that all. It's not, you don't have to get them what they ask for. You get them the, the category that they want, but not the brand because the brand is gonna be what they've been exposed to that you can find everywhere, okay? So for example, if somebody wanted an Oregon Pinot Noir, nobody's gonna say what they asked for is this beautiful 2015. The 15 was such a great year in Oregon, but the Dowsett, who the heck is Chris Dowsett? I mean, I love the wine, but no one's gonna ask for it but you can impress them. You get them an Oregon Pinot Noir, they're gonna ask for a brand that's more readily available. If they want Merlot, Washington State Merlot, nobody's asking for the Bear Star 2014. I don't even know if anybody will carry it. Maybe they will in your local market, but I'd rather do that than some generic Merlot that everybody buys from California or Washington, some generic brand from Washington that sells in every supermarket, every there. I'd rather have this this small production winery making from one single vineyard in Merlot with Cabernet Franc in it tastes like boy, nobody on your list is going to say uh, they drink. Uh, do you guys carry Bear Family Winery, the star Merlot? No one's going to do that. It's not going to be on your list. Merlot might be on your list, but it'll be a brand with no year. So listen to somebody that or search around for something that is unique in that category. Somebody might say they like uh, Super Tuscans. Or Chianti, well, no one's asking for Fulgente. It's, we hardly get it where I work. I mean, it's gone for like two years, and when it comes in, it's gone in like five minutes. So we have some 2016s. Uh, I already checked our warehouse where I work, and they're already out of stock of it. And there was like 1,400 bottles uh, five days ago. That's how many people want to order that. The 2016 delicious. Sangiovese is the grape of all of Tuscany. So any Super Tuscan is going to be mostly based with Sangiovese. Chianti is based with Sangiovese, but this is Sangiovese mostly, but with like five other grapes or six other grapes in there, like Colorino, like uh, Alicante, like Montepulciano, like Chilagiolo, like Terral Dago, and it's got this chocolatey finish, uh, Bruno Barancini, a state bottle of fruit from the southwest corner of Tuscany, 25 bucks, and you just made a wow person, and I'll tell you the vintage is good, because I personally tasted, and so could your wine merchant tell you if you'd listen to them and not go, this is what they asked for. And when you know, when it comes time for the holiday and especially New Year's Eve, you know you're gonna be shopping for champagne. And I trust me, very few people, unless they've shopped at a store that carries as exclusively like where I work, you know, no one's asking for Jean-Noel Hatton non-vintage rosé. 
They're just gonna ask for a rosé champagne. They like rosé, and they're gonna be some popular brand that are in every supermarket, and every generic plate, and you can buy those and spend double the cost and think, wow, they know how much I spent on them. Or you could buy one or two bottles of different types of rosés like Jean-Noël Hatton that has equal parts of Pinot Meunier and Pinot uh, uh, Noir and Chardonnay, and then this has strawberry and cherry flavors and some orange peel citrus to this thing. It's delicious and one half the price that allows you to buy two bottles of two types of champagne rosé, but not of the generic brand name with all the marketing dollars that have to go into that. And this is gonna be double the quality, I guarantee you, of any brand that you thought of rosé at half the price that you're spending for the brand name and you're gonna make more of an impression. You know, so I don't say to get them off the category, I just say as twisted as it sounds, trust me, if you trusted me during Thanksgiving, I hope you'll trust me for the holiday, don't buy the brand of wine or spirit that the person tells you that they drink, that the only reason they're asking for that is because that is what they are used to. I don't say go off the category, Find something unique and find a good vintage. Because if you, if they gave you a brand of Cabernet from Napa Valley and it's not the same year, it could be very well a disaster. You got them the brand and then they taste it, go, oh, that was a bad year, you know? So you can't do that with wine. The year is important. So this way, get the category, but not the brand. That's all. Listen to your expert. I'm here to help, not to hurt you. Why would I want you to buy something half the price and double, you know? I mean, why would I do that, right? Wouldn't I want you to buy, spend more money? No, I want you to have a better experience and for the giftee to go, wow, they really care about me and went all out. So for any gift ideas, you still have a chance to save yourself if you screwed up and brought the wrong wine for Thanksgiving and didn't have a rosé like I told you to. Uh, for all the trimmings and you had mud in your mouth when you drank that red wine and you put a mouth of cranberry sauce or cranberry yam, uh, uh, candied yams with it, by following this website and you can contact me, there's a million ways once you subscribe for free to this website, you'll get an email from me with so many ways to contact me and I will help you every way I can to impress that person and I will tell you where to get it even if it's not where I work, I will help you, okay, if you allow me. You have to be want the help in order to be helped like any other thing, right? So remember, it's the holiday time, everybody's a little stressed out and you've got your list, but remember, even wine and spirit is not for the snobs out there, it's for everyday people like you and me and people that buy the category and not this is what they ask for, this name. We can make it happen together, okay? Happy shopping out there and I'm here to help and I'll talk to you next time.